At 5 a.m. yesterday, we left Oketiti to Buku. From Ibuku to Oka. From Oka to Ohafia. And I drove from Ohafia to you yesterday. I'll try and be very brief, but the program will start really tomorrow. Okay, keep that to your magazine. Madam, I'm talking to you reading. It's an act of disrespect. I don't know how to thank all of you enough for your prayer for me. On Friday, I was near tears. In Ibuku, a woman who had been crippled for 10 years told her children that any day a man comes to that village, she would walk. And her son put together the program. But I wept when not only did she walk, she danced. Not only did she dance, nine others joined her. Well, I'm happy you're clapping, but it only means that my debt to God has increased. I did not cry, I wept. And it was only one day meeting, and it drew the largest crowd that I've ever had in the area. You all have to now pray for me that I will pay every debt I'm owing God and pay it well. But that brings me to the beginning of our program tonight. I'll try and be slow so that you can hear me very well. Let's turn to the book of 2 Kings chapter 3. And let's take verse 10 and verse 11 and verse 12. Somebody help us read. And the king of Israel said, Alas, have the Lord called these three kings together to deliver them unto Moab? But Joshua said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord that we may inquire of him? And one of the servants of the king of Israel said, Yes, there is a man, Elisha, the son of Shaphat, which poured water upon the hands of Elijah. No, no, no. That's okay. Joshua said, The word of the Lord is with him. Now, we are all equal in fellowship, but we are not equal in anointing. Number two, there is a reason why this building stands here. There's a reason why, <laughs> I don't know what my wife asked me. I was trying to ask her to repeat what she said. People keep asking me, why are you in New York? A cause is your own inability to know the man appointed by God to stand in the gap for you. We are all equal, but we are not equal in anointing. A cause is you being unable to know those God has sent to help you become what God wants you to be. That takes us to the book of Luke, chapter 19. Let's take verse 41 and 42 and 43 and 44. And I want that it be read slowly. You don't hear this type of sermon every day. And for you who are here, there must be a reason why God has brought you here tonight. And I don't want you to go home the same. Something must change in your life. Amen. Read, let me hear. And when he was come near, 
When Jesus came to Jerusalem, he beheld the city. He looked at the city and wept over it and cried over it, saying, saying, "If thou hast known, if Jerusalem had known, even thou, even thou, at least in this thy day, at least if you had known even today, the things which belong unto thy peace, that this day is your day of visitation." And I came to bring peace to Jerusalem. Wait, 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 wait. No, 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 don't, don't shout yet. Don't shout. There are so many of us who grew up in families where nobody recognized us as the pillar of that family. There are so many people here looking at me who don't know the man appointed by God to bring them to a place of fruition and a place of success. Jesus wept over Jerusalem. Why? Jerusalem did not see the divinity in Jesus. He robbed them of miracles. He robbed them of protection. He robbed them of promotion. He robbed them of transformation. He robbed them of being protected by their enemies. He robbed them of becoming what God had for them. There are men posted by God to stand in the gap between you and God. And what the enemy does is he will make you blind as a mark of curse. When I speak of the cause, what is a cause? A cause is you standing at the middle road of life and not know where help can come from. What is a curse? You see, a, a young boy who left school of journalism a few years ago, when does my certificate say I left that school? That's about maybe 40 years ago. He wrote against me here in Uyo that all I know is curses. And that there's no longer curse anywhere. I laughed. There is no mountain as high as ignorance. Jesus wept over Jerusalem. Why? They didn't know him. Read on, sir. But now they are hid from thine eyes. Okay, say it well. They are what? Hid from thine eyes. From thy eyes. That is, God no longer sees Jerusalem. Because he sent a man to them to help them become prominent, to become outstandingly successful, to become unstoppable to become unmolestable, to have enough food for the whole world. But no, they did not see Jesus as son of God, sent by God. I don't know how many of you know what you do not appreciate cannot bless you. What you cannot bless and don't reproduce itself in your life. There are so many of us who live a life of taking things for granted. There are so many of us who do not know where our help can come from. The Bible says Jesus wept over Jerusalem. Why? They did not know the hour of visitation. This program is not an ordinary program. It is our hour of what? Visitation. There are people here that God will visit. Amen. But there are many who don't expect that visitation. What you don't expect will hardly reach you. And it's a curse. You know, we speak of the cause of parents, the cause of husbands, 
the cause of masters, the cause of prophets, the cause of pastors. If you remember, don't you quarrel with your pastor. We have so many churches so that if your pastor is not treating you well, you can leave that church and go to another church. But don't fight your pastor. He has the power to put a cross upon you. He may look ordinary, but he's not. I was in Lagos, and God asked me to send for a young man who was a deacon of Assemblies of God Church. When he came, I asked him, were you among those that disgraced your pastor out of office? He said no. I asked that question again. He said no. Can you send for your wife? Most of the time, if not all of the time, women are more honest than men. The wife came and asked him, why did you tell Reverend a lie? You wrote that letter that sent the pastor out of our church. He got up and said to me, oh, I have forgotten. I have said it over and again that Nigerians are the greatest inventors of excuses. And yet they have no excuse for being full of excuses. There is a time in every man's life that you must not give any excuse. You must confront yourself. You must take responsibility. You must admit failure. You must ask for help. And I said to him, unfortunately, your pastor placed a cross upon you and you're going to kill somebody in two weeks' time. The wife held my leg. She said, please, please, cancel it. Madam, I will not. Time and again, people treat pastors as houseboys. In two weeks' time, he killed a young man from a rich family. What does that mean? The parents of the boy will not allow him to bribe his way out of the police station. That's what we call pastor's curse. Read on. We are back to chapter 19. Let's move on, sir. 41, 42. For, the three. for the days shall come upon thee. For the uh, days shall come upon you. That thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee. Your enemies shall surround you and humiliate you. And compass thee round. And compass thee round. And keep thee in. Wait, this is what Jesus is speaking to the Jews. And the day will come when your enemies would surround you and harm you. He was speaking as a prophet. He was not speaking as an ordinary man. Israel saw him as an ordinary man, but no, he was not. There are even women who are married to men who are not ordinary men. But the tendency is to look down on your husband. Treat him as nobody. Maybe you earn more than he does. That can be dangerous. Jesus was not speaking here as an ordinary man. He was speaking into the future as a prophet. That's what led to the Germans running after the Jews. And the boy who led that, the man who led that battle, the mother was a Jewish woman. Hitler was born by a Jewish woman. But she hated the Jews. Why? Well, he hated them, yes. He had to hate them to carry out what God had put together for him to do. We take too many things for granted. Sometimes I, I look at us as people who are stupendously arrogant. We speak without fear. Did I hear somebody stole our organ? Huh? It was not stolen. 
It's not confirmed. Are you afraid? I was I wasn't going to say something very bad. Just that he'll be mentally mad for seven days if he returns the huh? Now I won't ask God to kill him, but I ask God to rattle his 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 um, mental balance only for seven days. Just that once you become mad for seven days, a governor called me and said, Reverend, I'm about to go mental. And I said, No, no, Your Excellency, once you are mad in Nigeria, you are mad forever. No, don't be afraid. Life is made in a way. If you mess up the air, come, come, two of you not discuss this here. If you mess up the air, we wake you up to perceive the order. Uh, I was arguing with the governor and I said, Your Excellency, I'll see you three months from today and we shall conclude our discussion. And they will remove you from being governor on that third, the third month. He said I was bluffing, which was okay by me. He has the right to question the inerrancy of the word has spoken. But three months after, Abacha came from nowhere and sacked all of them. And that weekend, the man who paid his way to the government house lost his mother and made me the speaker and made him the guest of honor. When we met on the platform, he said, I can't sit next to you. You're a wicked man. <laughs> Only the wicked call me wicked. But you still need me because you will run for office again. There are people who look ordinary, but they are not. They saw Jesus, but didn't know him. It's an act of cross for you not to know the man sent by God to stand in the gap between you and heaven. Read on, sir. And shall lay thee even with the ground. What? They shall lay thee even with the ground. And that I, is, they will be on the floor. They will be on their knees. Go and, on. And thy children within thee. With your children also. And they shall not leave thee one stone upon another, because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. Because thou did not know your time of what? Visitation. Yes, people are holding programs everywhere, but programs are not the same. There are even programs where the organizer himself needs help and cannot change anybody's story. How many of you were here the last night of the Miracle Convention? I, I was expecting to hear testimonies from many of you. Or will you give the testimony later? Because God came down and visited us. Is that correct? I said that day I will not pray for anybody but there will be what to call miracle without prayer. When the crippled woman began to dance, the same thing that happened in, in Ibuku. And what shocked me, I'm sure my, my drivers will confirm this, and my policemen. Do you know, she trekked all the way from her village to Oka to see me yesterday morning. I went, madam, why do you have to Trick this distance. She said, there's no other way to show you my happiness except to trick. I don't have a car. I don't have money to hire any car. But I can trick. Something I've not done the last 10 years. As she was talking, I was crying. I was crying. But you remember the one we had here in New York? The woman said she came out of the world from where? Umar here. They were forcing her to come. She was not willing to come because she couldn't walk. 
But that day, did she dance or did she not? Why don't you give the Lord a good clap of everybody? We are all equal in fellowship, but we are not equal in anointing. We are going back to the third book of Second Kings, chapter 3. Where did you stop? We stopped, we started at verse 10. Where are you now? Go on to verse 11, verse 12, verse 13. Second Kings, chapter 3. Verse, go to 11 now. Jehoshaphat said, said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord that will may inquire of the Lord by him? And one of the king of Israel's servants answered and said, here is Elisha, the son of Shephat, which poured water on the hands of Elijah. And Jehoshaphat... Have you noticed the way they described Elisha? They didn't call him assistant superintendent. They called him a man that poured what? Water. So many Nigerians, they won't accept that type of title. So pour water is degrading. They should have said he was a man that caught fire that burnt those men who went to arrest Elijah. No. Read on. Joshua said, and Joshua said, The word of the Lord is with him. The word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel and Joshua and the king of Edom went down to him. Yes. And Elisha said unto the king of Israel, Elisha said unto the king of Israel, What have I to do with what thee? What have I to do with thee? Why don't you go to your father's idols? Read that. Okay. And, and Let's so, use his word. What did he say? Get thee to the prophets of thy father. Get thee to the prophets of thy father. And to the prophets of thy mother. And the prophet of thy mother. And the king of Israel said unto now, him. Now there is something I want you to understand here. Because pastors called by God do not have the same assignments. They can't speak the same way. So people get angry. Why is he hard? Why is he hard on us? Why is he rude? No, 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 no. We don't have the same assignments. And so, depending on what God has called you to do, what he has called you to do will determine your temperament. And if you see a man of God get angry, you don't have to question him and call him names and rebuke him. No. The anointing on any man determines how he'll express himself and the anointing. There are some pastors who are very humble. There are others who can't take nonsense. That that day in Ohuku, I was speaking, a man was calling, was using his phone. I asked him, will you stop that nonsense? Drop that phone. Only an Igbo man will use his phone while in a church service. I was so mad. The man knelt down and, and threw, in fact, he threw away the phone. Somebody asked him, why were you hard? Will you shut up your mouth? I won't answer that question. It was only when the miracles began that I was forgiven. They said the man, we were in Okija. And I said to them, there's a man on this platform. Ask him to stop pushing cocaine. Because they will arrest him next time he tries it. And somebody said, everyone here is a big man. Big man? What makes a man big? You see the money? No. Because arm robbers have a lot of money. You see the car? No. Arm robbers buy cars. Thieves buy cars. What makes a man a great man is a man's ability to compel God to do what he does not want to do. The man went to London after I had spoken and he was caught. I think the wife began to harass my wife and me. He said, pray. Why would I pray? And Hoga, stop calling me because even when you come back to Okija, after celebrating your survival, you will die. 
He said, what type of pastor are you? I don't know. I didn't make myself. That's just how I saw myself. So stop calling me. When he came back to Okija, the first thing he announced was, Omar said I would die. Here I am. After the party, he died that night. The area I'm interested in is for you to know. We are not all equal. When you see men sent by God to help you, respect them, honor them. But only the words of their mouth confirmed by God will be an affirmation and attestation that what they said is true. Everybody free to claim to be what he is not or what he is. But only God confirming what a man has claimed will also confirm his claim. Read on, sir. And the king of Israel said unto him, Nay, for the Lord had called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. And Elisha said, As the Lord of hosts liveth, before whom I stand, surely, were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, I will not look toward thee, nor see thee. But now bring me a mistress. And it came to pass. Wait, when wait, wait. He said, bring me a powerful musical team to minister unto me. Why? When a prophet is depressed, when a prophet is not happy, he loses his anointing. Number two, a prophet does not prophesy at will. He prophesies, he prophesies only when God has anointed him to prophesy. This is why I plead with the choir. Take your music ministry seriously. Wait on God. When I, I used to be a choir master for 10 years. So I'm speaking out of experience. My choir used to start fasting on a Friday. That was in an Anglican church in Abayu Mocham. And they would sing on Sunday. Because of the prayer invested, when they sing, people would fall in the audience and sleep off, including the preacher. They said I was a magician. No. There is an anointing that will come from this altar. Many will not be able to sit on their seats. You are not here to entertain us. You are here to bring down the glory and the unction and the anointing of the Lord. It can bring healing to this crowd. It can make the past, the preacher for that day to fall and sleep. So he called for musicians to play. And what happened, sir? And it came to pass. And it came to pass. When the minstrel played. Why the minstrels play? That the hand of the Lord that came upon him. the hand of the Lord was upon him. And the hand of the Lord is God commissioning you to do the supernatural. There are some of you, when we are singing, you will be looking here and there, distractedly and half-heartedly. You are hurting yourself because you will go home with no blessing. Oh Lord, my God. Ah. Oh, Kokon, how are you? Oh Lord, my God. But what? You are simply making a fool of yourself. You can't do that to a governor. <laughs> we hosted the governor on the 24th day of December I was shocked out of my socks when my wife came and greeted the man respectfully and left without chatting with the man I said to myself it's good to be a, a governor if I had been a governor she would have just done the same thing and walked away how much more God you can't be singing and be looking here and there. You go home without any benefit, any blessing. 
Once we raise a song, shut off everybody and shut in the presence and the glory of the Lord. Let that consume your attention. Let nobody distract you. Because God can choose that. That your sickness must go. God can choose that your life must be promoted. God can choose that his presence, his peculiar concentrated presence will come upon you. And when his presence comes upon you, his presence will mock everything that mocks you. So you don't come here to look for your friends. You come here to make contact with him who is awesomely awesome. The Bible says, as a minister of sound, Elisha said, the hand of the Lord came upon him. No prophet prophesies at will. Only God can tell you to prophesy. And what happened, sir? He said, God says the Lord, God says the Lord, make this valley full of make ditches. this valley full of ditches. For God says the Lord, for God says the Lord, you shall not see wind. You will not see wind. Neither no. shall you see rain. Nor will you see rain. Yes. But the valley of Baca shall be filled with water. We are, we are dealing with He that specializes in miracles. And I want you to ask yourself, do I believe that God can cause the impossible to become possible in your life, in your village, in your business? <laughs> we were at the Shedda Church in Lagos. A young man gave an offering of 1,000 naira. He said to me, if God does not give back this money to me, I'll come to you to collect it. I said, okay, just that beginning today, money will run after you. When you close your eyes, you see money. When you, work, when you open your eyes, you see money. You see so much money that you will not lack money again. He won lottery that day. <laughs> I think they gave him 200,000. The next day he won another. And that was the time they were selling uh, um, soft drink corks. If you open it and there's a number in your own, you have one money. He won about 10 of that. He came to me and said, tell God I don't want to touch money again. From that day, in my dreams, I dream about money. On the road, I imagine money. Everywhere I go, he said, before I go mental, tell God I don't want money again. I told him I will not. You have touched God on the wrong side. I don't have to do it the way you would have done it. I do it according to the calling of God upon my life. When I said to Mr. President, your prayer request for us to pray against violence will not be answered. Ayo came to me and said, they'll put bullets in your head. Oh my, you're a crazy man. Hey, my friend, the person who will shoot me, the great-grandmother has not been born. So why wouldn't I relax and enjoy myself? Right where you are tonight, ask God to show you that uncle who can help you and show you your nephew that will become somebody great someday in life. Let God show you these things. Those who can help you. Those you can help. Because you are called by God to stand in the gap between some people and God. They are also called to stand in the gap between you and God. You must know them, but you must also know those that you can invest in. I don't know how many of you are honest enough to say you have looked down, you have looked into your family, and there are people you could have helped, but you didn't help them. Now they are doing well, 
and they don't want to see you because you did not help them at the hour of need. Anybody who, has, who is that honest to confess your failure to see those God has appointed to help you? Anybody here? Let me see your hand raised up. No, you can't be right. There must be somebody in your family, small. You didn't help him or her when you ought to have done so. Now the boy, God has sent somebody else to take your place. And that person is doing very, very well. Is there anybody here who will say to God, give me another chance? Anybody here? If you don't confess that, you won't have the second chance. I, I gave, when I was traveling to America in 1975, I, I gave my suit to somebody who wanted me to give him my suit. But I grumbled. I complained. And the man brought back the suit and said, hey, as I go to my house, somebody brought a newer one than your own. Can you take it back? I knelt down and said, Father, give me another chance. As I was traveling through the motor park, I saw a pastor who was crying. He lost his suit. And God said, that one, the return, can you bring it to this man? I had a second chance. How many of you would like to have a second chance? Can I see your hand raised up? No, no, no. Do you admit there was somebody you could have helped who did not help? That's where I am. All those who, who can honestly admit where the bull knocked them down. And you're asking God for a second chance. Can you now raise up your hand? Raise it very well. Good. I'm happy there are some honest people here. What do you think I said when you raised your hand? Those who want to eat Gary tomorrow? Raise your hand very well. Because a second chance will come. Is there anybody here who is saying, God, if I missed to help anybody from my family, give me another chance. Let me see your hand raised up. And raise it very well. You don't pretend before God. For me to have said it, there must be somebody in that category. Are you ready for a second chance? Can you stand up? Let me know your number. Those who are sitting down, Father, they claim to have not had such experience. Don't give them second chance. Father, honor their requests and their prayer. I ask in Jesus name Amen. sit down there are many of us here tonight who will not be part of the winning team in our families unless God can open your eye to see beyond the scene you mean in your family there is nobody that nobody helped if help could have been not only great, but those who helped him could have been part of the celebration. Because if you fail to help that kind of person, God will raise up another person who will help that person. Can we go to the book of Esther, chapter 4? Let's see, verse six. what does it say? Mordecai said to Esther, do you know whether you're here at a time like this that God may use you to wipe away our tears? It is easy to miss an opportunity. That's a big curse. Have you seen it? Read Esther chapter 4 verse 6. Read 6-6. Six, six. Let me hear. Haman came in. No, Haman. Who can help us? There's a place where Mordecai said to Esther, do you know whether you're here for a time like this? Huh? 14 of chapter, of chapter 4. I want you to take note of that powerful Bible passage. Every one of us here, you are created on purpose for a purpose. But it can miss your own timing. You can miss your hour of divine visitation. 
I'm going to call for questions. It's like you're looking at me like I fell out of the moon. You are here to solve a problem. Everybody here was created to solve a problem. But you can miss the opportunity to solve that problem. And I don't want you to miss it. I want God to open your eyes to a point that you will not miss your day of visitation. Can we hear verse 14 of chapter 4? For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at if this time, if you hold thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise. Then shall the deliverance of the Jews arise from another place. From another place. But thou Do I have any who would like to miss the place God has put together for you to showcase your gifts, to show help to those who need help? To stand in the gap between God and those who have no one to help them, but who, through you, shall become great. Anybody who wants who wants to miss it, let me see. If you don't want to miss, let me see your hand raised up. Raise it very well. That's what we are talking about. You are here on purpose. You are not just here to waste away our bench. You are here on purpose for a purpose. And if God says, help your sister's son, that boy may become the child of your old age. He may take care of you because you took care of him. Am I, am I, am I communicating at all? Are you hearing me? You can miss it. So many of my own uncles miss their own. Now when they harass me, give us money, I will ask them, did you help me? Leave me alone. I'll help you only when God says help. Does that make sense to everybody here? Mordecai said to Esther, do you know whether you are here in time like this? That is what I don't want you to miss. If you miss it, you regret it. When that boy will become somebody, I am telling the boy, hey, I am your mother's only brother. <laughs> and the boy will look at you and say, oh, oh God, you didn't help me as my mother's only brother. Leave me alone. It has happened to some of you already that those who could have helped you did not help you. That's why you struggle through school. And you wouldn't feel like helping those who did not help you. But I don't want you to miss it. Don't miss your own day. Of what? Visitation. That's what Jesus was telling Jerusalem. And it is the greatest evidence of curse. What is curse? Curse is you running in circle like a blind horse without being able to fulfill the call of God upon your life. And to me, it is the worst that can happen to any one of us. You, you know, you may even have a child that doesn't look intelligent. You may give up on him and say you'll be nobody. But that child may become a star. Time and again, the prospect of your child can be in question. The boy may show no interest in education. How many of you know that the man who invented this, discovered this electricity, was so stupid that the teacher said he was no use for, <laughs> for classroom activities. He should go home. And had become one of the greatest scientists ever. Whether the school said he was not worthy to be. How many of you know that you could be failed in his mathematics? And were driven away for being Mr. No Good. But he became the first professor of mathematics in Nigeria. If that had been your child, would you have discovered his tomorrow? That's what I don't want you to miss. Beginning today, let go open your eyes that you may recognize those who were called to help, sent to help, created to help. What makes a man cry is what God has asked him to solve. Is there anything that makes you cry? 
Anything that makes you cry? Are you sure? <laughs> because some people, they are so wicked that they can't cry. They can't cry. Do I have anybody who would like to present to God tonight a prayer request that says, Father, don't allow me to miss my calling, the reason of my being here on earth. When I see those who sent me to help, ring a bell that I may not miss it. You know, you can't remain this young. Some of you who are young, you don't know some of us who were this young before. But now we, we work with labor and pain. Before you get to that point, I don't know if you would like that God will so lead you and guide you that you will not miss your own day of visitation. Before we pray, let me take four questions. We are about to close. I have said we shall close on time today. Yes, anybody who has a question for me, don't ask me about my grandmother. She's dead. Ask me about the things I have taught now. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Somebody help him. You're having a question with what? A problem with what? I'm having a problem with my stepmom. Your stepmom? Yes, sir. So we were, we were quarreling. You will quarrel? Yes, sir. Why would you quarrel with your stepmother? It's wrong to quarrel with her. Yes, sir. She has become your father's wife. Yes, sir. She has become your mother. Yes, sir. You don't quarrel with your mother. Thank you, sir. So please, sir, after the quarrel, I met my dad so that we can reconcile with her. 